and this is my son Zach and I'm from uh, Canna Potions and Lotions and with my partner Haley we make a number of different kinds of uh, body products including bath bombs. So today um, we are going to show you, I'm going to show him and hopefully teach you how to make a very basic THC bath bomb. Okay, I'm going to quickly go through the ingredients that you need to make a bath bomb. Um, <clears throat> don't ever um, try and replace either of these two ingredients. Baking soda and citric acid are absolutely necessary for the chemical reaction. Other people take the Epsom salts out because they don't like the look of them because they've got the big chunks in them. Yeah. Uh, but I throw mine in the blender so they don't have that in, in them. They're nice and soft like flour. But these, these have magnesium in them. Yeah. And magnesium is really good for your muscles, you know, if you have aches and pains, it takes the pain on your muscles. And, of course, cornstarch, you can use kaolin clay, but everybody can get their hands on cornstarch and these basic ingredients. Uh, you don't even have to look online to get citric acid. I've got this in this, this container, but I just buy mine at the local... Wine uh, and beer store. Yeah, the wine and beer store. So, yeah, it's cheap there and it's, it's something you can probably find in your community and you don't have to wait for it to come uh, through the mail. So, uh, I also, uh, you can use water, a uh, tablespoon of water in the recipe, but I prefer to use witch hazel because witch hazel is good for you. Um, and then I supplement everything with a little bit of extra CBD, so I know how much is in them, because I don't know how much is in, I know how much THC is in these guys, but I don't know how much CBD, so. And then there's fragrance oils. These aren't essential oils, these ones are called uh, fragrance oils. Um, and so those are your basics. And you can put colorants and things like that in them too. But this is the basics of what you need to make a, a nice THC bath bomb. Uh, you don't have to go and buy anything fancy like this if you're not sure if it's something you really want to ever do again. Um, you can just go to the dollar store. I bought these cute little whatever's at Dollarama. That's a pretzel. Pretzels. Yeah, and this one's a... Ice cream cone. Yeah. But if you don't even have to do that, you, you, like everybody's, well, hopefully everybody's got one of those uh, muffin tins. Just press it into a muffin tin and let it, and let it dry overnight and then okay. dump it out. Tippity boo. There you go. So this is everything you need. And, oh, yeah. And don't forget to have a scale because our recipe is by weight. But we're also going to um, measure it out and we will tell you what it measures up to. Okay, we are going to get started with all the dry ingredients with the exception of the citric acid and I'll tell you that why. Why later. Okay, we're going to start with the dry ingredients and we're going to measure them out and throw them in here. On the way, between that step, we're going to use this antique fellow here because something happened to my base after and I don't even want to know what. Oh, right, I was trying to clean it. Yeah, okay, whatever. And it popped through without <laughs> I was just trying to wash it out because it had what you call it in it, pasta goo. Okay, well I appreciate the attempt. I was just trying to wash it and then just <laughs> ripped right through. So we've got this antique guy here, which is kind of fun to use anyway, so. Okay, so let's turn the scale on. And the first thing that we want to measure out is eight ounces of um, baking soda. I will get a little scoop. Scoop. And then I'll figure out what the measurement is as far as that. It's close to a cup of tea. Nope, you put that through after you measure it. So three, five, eight. Oh, seven and a quarter. Seven, five, eight. Not too much. Eight. Hey, get one. Okay, let's tap that down and see how much is in there. Start curiosity. It is. <coughs> okay, that's just under a cup. Or just about a cup, I guess, if you. No, just under a cup. So, I guess if you're doing it at home, you'd measure a cup, right? So, yeah. Okay, you want to sit that guy in there? Just 
pour it in and then you turn the little thing in. I'll get this out of the way. I'm surprised I haven't seen more of these in like just sketchy people I've met in like houses. Okay. For nefarious products. Yeah. Seriously, how does not like every trap house have one of these? Okay. Oh they they get them. <laughs> okay. And then next we do half as much of everything else. Uh, but we're not going to put the citric acid in. Um, and the reason that we don't put the citric acid in until everything else is mixed in is when the citric acid and the baking soda are together, if they get the slightest bit damp, they start a chemical reaction and they start fizzing just like those, you know, those volcanoes you used to yep. in school, shit like that. So if you keep everything dry and then, and then put your wet ingredients in and then put the citric acid in, you get the best kind of bath on it's busiest. So, okay. okay, four ounces of everything else. And so you'd think four ounces of this would be like a half a cup, but it's like totally not. And it has something to do with the size of them. I don't know. Size of the particles? Probably. Density. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. Too much. So yeah, you'd think that would be half a cup because it's only four ounces, but it's not. It's almost as much as there was of um, baking soda, isn't it? Yep. It's almost a full cup. It's over three quarters of a cup. So I would, yeah. So I would definitely weigh your ingredients. Okay, you wanna boo boo? Oh, you just pulled it out of the way. <laughs> Sorry. Welcome back to baking with cocaine. <laughs> so we're gonna um, just put in four ounces of Epsom salts, and these have been sifted once, but the they tend to with the humidity they tend to clump. So we're gonna sift them again. Usually I put some color in too, uh, in the form of mica powders. Um, if you're using soap colorant, you put it in with your wet ingredients, obviously, because it's a wet ingredient. And if you're using mica powders, you put them in with your dry ingredients. Like that. So, but we are... Are, are we putting... Do you want to put any color in this guy? Uh, we don't need to if we're doing cream soda, mostly white. Okay. So we are not, and, and 
obviously, you know, a lot of people don't have these things at home, too. So, we'll do it with the stuff they have at home. So, we've got our dry ingredients already built, and next we're going to do the light. Okay. Okay, so now we've got our um, dry ingredients all ready to go. We're going to go with the wet ingredients. First, we start off with a tablespoon of water or witch hazel. So here's a tablespoon. Up the lid still. And I just put it in the skirt. Make sure you use a full tablespoon because it makes a difference in how dry the uh, final product is. Okay. And then we're going to use a tablespoon of, two tablespoons of cannabis oil. So if you want me to, if you hold it over the, over that guy, I stirring, you want to give that a stir, I will, because you need to hold the bowl with one hand, stir with the other, I am going to pour this in. And usually when people are making these things, they have to be super careful and go really slow pouring everything in because they put their citric acid in already. And because we didn't, there's no chemical reaction, right? And so now we've got a tablespoon of oil, coconut oil in here, mm -hmm. and we've got a dose of the um, tincture, tincture. And now all we need to do is measure out two teaspoons of essential oil. So I would think with um, when you look up what what um, is traditionally the smell of cream soda, it's actually vanilla and lemon. Okay. Which is like to, totally blew my mind. I thought it would be something like red and fruit. the essential oils. Pink lemonade was more of a bright, I don't know, fragrance. More like um, what I imagine cream soda to be. Yeah. And that one is, um, you only need about half a teaspoon of that guy. Because it's very strong. And vanilla is really hard to get. And don't let anybody tell you there is such thing as vanilla essential oil because there is not. You can't make essential oil. You can make um, distillate and stuff like that. You can't make essential oil. So it's always fragrance oil. And it's really hard to capture the right scent. Like this is what people imagine vanilla to be. It's, it's one of those things that everybody knows what vanilla smells like. And it's like really hard for the fragrance companies to get this right. I don't know why. Sorry. <laughs> no, I don't know if you heard that. What? Farting? <laughs> Papa's farting? <laughs> oh my god. I say what turn? Papa's farting? Yeah. Oh my god. This one's not coming out. So yes. there we go. No, oh, that's lots. That's plenty. And then, and then, <clears throat> give it a sniff. Like seriously, tell tell yourself whether or not it smells like cream soda. Yeah, it does. <coughs> does it? Yeah. Let me smell. Oh, that's cool. Ah. This is smart. Okay. Now that's that's it as far as the wet ingredients. You want to dump that in here and give it a stir. These guys are in your way. I can be your sous chef. So the last thing that we need to throw in here is the citric acid. So we're going to measure out four ounces. Four ounces of that. Okay, this is better turn on. 
Mm, I think you measure four ounces of that. And let's see how much we get. So two. Three and a half a cup. So it was just under a cup of uh, baking soda, just under a cup of cornstarch, uh, a little bit over half a cup of Epsom salts, and exactly half a cup of citric acid. So if you want to make it by cups, there you go. Nice, but it's got a little bit of chunks, and you want everything to be distributed evenly. So what I do here usually is take my hands and take the, the stuff and, and just rub it together until you've got nice, fine, fine grains. And then when it's ready to go, you can kind of feel it. It feels have a little. Um, when you hold it in your hands. Neat, eh? yeah. It feels like sand. And then you know it's ready to go when you hold it in your hand in a clump. Yeah, just pop this word. And then drop it. And it kind of holds that clump. Like, like the gap sand look. See? <laughs> Isn't that cool? Yeah. And that's how you know it. Like it feels really dry, doesn't it? Yeah. But a lot of people are worried at this point and they think, oh, it's, no, it's too dry, I've got to put more water in or witch hazel or whatever. And it's, it's actually not bad. And you don't want to put too much water in, but you also don't want to put too little in or witch hazel. And so what I do, uh, and when you're working too, a lot of stuff will uh, evaporate. So I, I got this teeny little spray bottle and it's got a nice fine mist. And I put witch hazel in it and it's labeled. And then um, if this dries up as I'm working with it, I just give it a quick ch -ch -ch. My hands can. Good as new. Okay, so Zach's gonna overfill these like quite a bit, these molds, and then jam the two of them together. And the trick with bath bombs, you don't want to overfill them or underfill them. You want to fill them like he did, and then they blow up really nicely, have a really nice effect in the tub. And some people they make things um, called fizzies and or embeds and things like that and put them in these. And it's gonna work. They're just they're just kind of trying to work. Oh good job. I just didn't want them to roll away, so I thought this would work. It's a little more challenging than I thought it would be, I'm sorry. doing when he's knocking the answer is loosening it from the sides. Good job. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's trying to go. Okay. I'm going to do a little close up. Okay. Mm -hmm. got the four bath bombs from that recipe and they smell like cream soda yeah. and they look really good and you did a really good job. Okay so if you have any questions then message me or whatever. Uh, I hope this was helpful and uh, I hope you learned something. Yeah. Cool. Okay thanks. <laughs>